Hey guys, how is it going? My name is SNK Aussie. Welcome back. And in today's video, I have got my build of the Paladin for mod 10.5 and also looking in towards mod 11. So what I've gone for is uh, I've gone for all this item and gear and stuff like that. So I'll show you what it is and we'll go into depth um, more on top of it. So I've got the Brynia's Demise and as you can see uh, you gain 2000 power if your defense is higher than your power and then vice versa. So obviously we're pushing quite a bit of power um, and if I can get that higher then I do get an extra buff for the defense which will be great. Then I have the Warborn Gladiator chest, I also have the Warborn arms, and the Warborn feet. So this is all completely viable for the PvE. Um, I just have it on because I like to do PvP as well, and uh, it works out really nice when you have uh, the stats of uh, power, defense, deflection on the chest, because uh, you gain a ton of that power, recovery, defense on the arms, and also the power, defense, deflect on the feet itself. So the main hand and offhand I've gone with are the Twisted set. Um, the Relic weapons are good for the Oathbound Paladin, uh, but looking into Mod 11, the new sets look uh, a lot better for our support builds, and that is exactly what we are. Uh, we're going in the long run side of it. Then we look at the artifacts, so no matter what, um, hands down for me, Paladins should have the Sigil of the Devoted. Uh, the reason being because it generates 100% of your total action points over 15 seconds. And uh, if you actually have enough AP to generate that within the 15 seconds, you can use it. And of course it still builds your AP through the second loop of your daily, so you can actually get two action point, uh, you can get two daily, sorry, within those 15 seconds if you have the right action point gain on there. Then we're going to go with the Sigil of the Oathbound Paladin because you get a nice maximum hit points. You also get power and AoE resist. So the power and the maximum hit points are the nice ones that we want. We're really trying to push that. You'll find out why in a bit. And which is the reason why I've gone for maximum hit points, defense, and guard gain. So defense is obviously for this mod. Um, Oathbound Paladins take a lot more damage and they are a lot more squishy. Uh, but with this um, artifact, it will help you out a lot. And the same with the White Heart of the Dragon. And this is going for maximum hit points and defense and an AOA resist. So that is an also an awesome one to have because that's going to push some of the feats later on. Now, regards to the artifact set, what we've gone for is, that's right, we haven't gone for a set. For you guys who don't know, I've recently changed my build. I've gone for the Greater Lavender's Cloak, which gives you those eight action points. We do lose out on the um, action point gain, but you do get eight armor class. Sorry, I think I did say eight armor um, gain, which is wrong. Uh, action point gain. So you lose out on the action point gain, which is about 4% every three seconds. Um, but now we gain um, eight um, armor class. So that is going to help us out with defense as well. Um, the the Black Eyes to the Beholder set is a great one to have. So if you're doing a lot of damage um, and you like to have that, if you've got quite a bit of defense anyway, then you could possibly go for that. Uh, it does help out with action point gain as well, um, but it's not vital. This is a very good build with um, defense, so you can stack that as well. You become more of a tank um, for your classes, which help out with everybody as well, which is what a lot of people are looking for nowadays. Then I luckily got the Ring of Rising defense. So this stacks a lot of defense on the character. Uh, with Azures as well, as well as the Ring of Brutality, which increases our power. Then for the belt is the Greater Pl Plated Band of Constitution. So we're stacking those hit points. That will uh, I will show you why we're stacking that later on uh, to show you exactly why. And then I have the Greater Everfrost co uh, Chain Coat and the Greater Everfrost uh, Pants as well. So, of course, we're all wanting to get into those Fangbreaker and... Uh, Master Svordborg, and these are the reason why. And uh, looking at the enchants as well going forward, we're going to be pushing a lot of defense onto this character. I have Azures in all the defense slots except this one here where I've gone for the maximum hit points. So fill up all the ones you can with uh, defense and then any overflow slots, I would say uh, maximum hit points. And the rest of them, I've gone with dark uh, enchants for the armor pen, which works really nicely, increases your damage. So we're still going to be able to do a lot of DPS 
Um, it's still quite a heavy DPS build. We don't do as much, but we still do a lot, and it does help out with the groups as well. Um, then we're looking at the stats themselves. Oh no, go back, sorry. Whoa, 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 missed a massive thing here. So, the armor enchantment slots are the Transcendent Shadow Clad, and the armor, the weapon one, is the Transcendent Lightning. So, of course, you guys know that there's going to be weapon enchantment changes in Mod 11, and we are pushing that, the Transcendent Lightning. That's what we're going for. We're going to try that one out. Um, I might change it to the Fey Touch. I'm not sure yet. The reason we've gone with the Shadow Clad is because it gives a really, really nice deflect chance rating and as well increases your damage resistance for 8 seconds by 4% as well. And it can stack up to 8 times. So it's amazing. It's a great one to have. We are pushing a lot of deflect um, and you'll see why later on. So then a, a rough look at some of the powers and crit strike and all that lot. We've got 32,000 power and we have 20,000 defense. And this deflect Deflection um, does rise and fall, but the main thing we want is that deflect chance. We're not too bothered about the actual number that deflect does, but we want the chance as high as possible. So getting that shadow clad does help a lot. Then looking at the ability scores as well, we're going to push all into constitution and all into charisma, gaining as much action point gain as we can possible, and then also gaining the maximum amount of hit points and damage resist from the constitution. And uh, you can see that I have 40 armor class um, from this, which helps out a lot with damage resistance. And we look down further down the bottom, you can see that uh, my defense is rocking at about 75% damage resistance and a 14% um, deflection chance with obviously that going higher depending on how much I do. With the shadow clad enchant. Now we come away from that. And we're going to have a look at the powers themselves. What are we going to be running? Well we're going to be running radiant strike. Which increases your armor pen and damage increase. Which you'll see later on. Um, which works brilliantly with the encounter powers. Then we have valorous strike. Which increases your damage resistance by 5%. Brilliant. You've got to have it. It's amazing. Then for soloing and mob clearing, things like that, is Burning Light is a great one to have. And in the uh, the lower ended dungeons, once you get high enough, uh, like my item level, and you feel comfortable using it, use Burning Light in the Templar Spider, things like that, you'll be able to push right through. Then we have Divine Judgment, which is a great one to use, which is a damage, uh, a really high crit damaging um, encounter power, uh, or daily power, sorry. Um, in Demogorgon, I've been able to crit about 700, 800,000, nearly a million. So it is a really, really good one to have um, for the damage themselves. Then for the personal feat, we're going to go with Aura of Courage as well. Um, the main encounter powers that we're going to push are Bane, Templar's Wrath, and Circle of Power. These ones are going to really make you the tanky player that you can be um, with this build. The way that the mod has changed, you're now taking a lot of damage. You want these ones. You can uh, defeat Orcus really well, as well as um, Fangbreaker. I've pushed through there a couple of times as well. But the main reason we're using Circle of Power is it also increases the damage resistance of you and allies within the circle and uh, increases your damage dealt. And you'll see why in a little bit. Then we look at Bane, which is the other brilliant one we want, which you cast on one player or one enemy. And uh, you can stack up to three times, increasing your damage dealt by 30% and their damage reduced by 30% as well. It's a lot of damage reduction for especially people like Orcus and the Dragon Turtle in Fangbreaker. It's a must-have. And it also increases um, the damage done by all players. So it's a buff and uh, debuff to the enemy which helps out your allies as well which is great then Templar's Wrath is the final piece that I'm going to talk about because it links in with everything I've been talking about so far so you gain temp hit points equal to 300% of the damage dealt so using Bane and using Circular Power which increase the damage dealt by you then using Templar's Wrath you can really kick in a massive temp hit point um, with their um, Orcus runs I can get up to 400 um, to 500 temp hit points as standard and then if you're running with a Guardian Fighter and any other um, like devoted clerics who are doing buffs, debuffs, you can go higher than that as well. But those temp hit points are the most major thing you can have. And with such a big defense, you're protecting those temp hit points as well. And then we're going to be running Aura of Wisdom, which increases yours and your allies' um, recharge speed by 25%. So that is an amazing uh, feat, personal feat to have. You must have it, in my opinion. 
aura of vengeance has been changed massively uh, it no longer reflects as much and uh, doesn't do a, like a loop between you and knight's valor and all sorts of other reflected damage so it doesn't work as well still great again when you're solo clearing use binding oath it's still very good it procs or your weapon enchantments a lot. Um, it bounces off, especially with the lightning enchantment. Uh, bounces a lot and works really, really well. Um, I really do enjoy using it. And then we're still going to push Divine Protector. Um, we're still getting a lot of AP gain. So we're pushing out this bubble as much as you can possible. And the vital piece in this change, the Divine Protector, you redirect 60% of the damage you would take to yourself. So originally it used to be 100% of this. Um, and for a long while, then they changed the amount of time it took, and now they've changed how much they take. So the friends, your allies in the group can now take damage while this is up, which is unfortunate, but you'll see something later on with the boons and the feats, which I'm going to make help you um, keep them alive longer as well. So now we go into general, and I am a Dragonborn race. Um, the reason being because you receive 5% more healing from all spells and abilities, including your own and including Sanctity, which is an amazing ability to have as a tanky build as well, which is great. And uh, your power and critical chance are each 3% higher than that of other races. So, of course, the power is the main thing. The critical chance isn't major, but we do like to have that anyway. Now we look at the feats, and uh, we're going to have 5 out of 5 into activating Divine Call. Now generates 5% of your max AP. We want that AP back as fast as possible. Keep that bubble up, and um, keeping our team alive. Then you go with increasing your maximum hit points by 9%. Of course, the maximum hit points are going to be affected by Aura of Courage, so you, do, you and your group will deal extra damage as well with it. Then I've gone for three points into um, this uh, haste, exemplars haste. Your encounter powers regenerate 6% faster. The quicker you can get those encounters out, the quicker that you can stay, uh, the longer you can stay alive, especially Templar's Wrath, things like that. You can pop them a lot quicker. Then we've gone with Wrathful Strikes. Your at wills deal 2% more damage. It was just for me, it was just a point to push up to the next level. And this top one, increase your damage resistance by 0.5. It's it's an awful point into it. I don't like it. I honestly don't like it. 0.5 is nothing. If it was 0.5 per thousand damage that you have, defense you have, then fair enough, it would be a point worth putting in, but it's not very good. So we've gone for the point into 2% more damage. Then we've gone in Passioned Please. You're, you generate Divine Call energy 6% faster. If we can get that Divine Call back quicker, you'll see later on why. Um, it's a must do and then steadfast each point of constitution now grants an additional two and a half percent maximum hit points so we have 30 um, so it is a huge boost to maximum hit points really nice so for you guys who are running as a human picking those um, heroic encounter or the heroic feats as well the best one to go for is force of will um, increasing your critical chance um for each point of charisma by an additional percent that's a great one to have it is really nice because if you can increase your critical chance then you can have a massive boost to templar's wrath as well if you crit on there as well and now the main path we're going to go through is the justice path. we want to fill this as quick as possible and um, so that you can try and do those dungeons as fast as possible getting into them ones we've gone for flash of light um, increases your movement speed uh, as well by 30% for four seconds it's just the better one in my opinion out of these two uh, we don't have that many control strength uh, attacks and they're not very lasting anyway so 10% of a small amount of time is not that much so I've gone with flash of light you can easily run this um, swift flash makes you go through Templars, uh, the Templar spider a lot quicker anyway then we look at Flash of Light. Your encounter powers have a 25% chance to reduce the cooldowns of your nearby allies' encounter powers by 10%. So again, this also is a, um, a great one to have as a support build for your allies and things like that cooling their uh, encounter powers down which is great for them to keep up the dps and especially these dcs now much more viable anointed army gets that up um, being able to get that up as quick as possible as well 
Then Radiant Champion, your very presence inspires your allies when you have at least two other allies within 30 of you. All of you gain 25% more movement speed and 5% cooldown reductions. Again, this with Flash of Light, you're giving their cooldowns so much quicker, getting them back to um, usable as fast as possible. Then we have Echoes of Light. Your at will powers have a 10% chance to trigger Echo on you. Echo makes your next encounter powers instantly recharge all of your encounter powers. So this works brilliantly um, with the final point, which is the Vengeful Judge. And uh, it gives you back your encounter power encounter powers quicker as well so it's basically throughout all this it's uh, basically building up a recovery without actually putting points into recovery itself it is an amazing uh, line of feats to have um, as a support class as well works really nicely and uh, one part of the build that I've changed massively is turn away from purifying light uh, purifying fire so your at will powers apply purifying fire stacks up to five times dealing extra weapon damage and it is uh, removed when you strike your foe with an encounter so it's good for that dps but personally it's not as great you could put your points into prism which is exactly what we've done so prism has been changed and um, the heal over time effects do not trigger however rousing warmth which is a boon which works perfectly with this procs it and it bounces off you and it also works brilliantly with your sanctity so once you heal yourself in sanctity this bounces off and heals allies as well so it works beautifully and uh, it's such a great build especially the reason being is because the bubble um, or the divine protector itself has been changed so that 40% that your allies are taking prism now effectively heals them up that 40% that's damaged so you heal as well Helping out your group with that final bit. So that 40% that you can't protect them from, you're getting the heals out to help them sort of protecting them, but you're healing them up as well. Then the final point is Vengeful Judge. Your Divine Call now also applies Judge to yourself for 10 seconds. Judge increases the damage dealt by 35% as well as reducing your cooldowns on your currently recharging powers by 35%. 5%. Your encounter powers have a chance to immediately grant you a charge of divine call. So again, with this divine uh, vengeful judge proccing with things like echo of light um, and also radiant champion as well as flash of light and also the other ones which is divine call and encounter powers have a faster cooldown. You're practically getting your encounter powers back super super fast and helping out your group immensely as well. And the final path is the light. And uh, we're going to go with Gifts of Light. You heal for 10% more. So this is going to help when you're actually taking a lot of damage. Especially in things like um, Fangbreaker when the Dragon Turtle starts stacking up his Wild Slam. And uh, you're taking some worthy hits on you. Um, you can pop into Sanctity and you will in fact heal yourself more as well. Which is brilliant. Then we're going to go with the Warrior's Bastion. You gain 10% more defense from your equipment. So we're obviously pushing that a lot more. Um, I've gone away from the Bulwark uh, Paragon Path purely because of the next point, which is the Aura of Gifts. The original powers that we wanted, or the original feat we always want to go with. Um, but unfortunately, this mod sort of killed it a little bit. But now with the refinement, double refinement weekend, we're able to go back to it. And allies within 30 of you gain 25% of your power. They must re remain within 30 of you for at least 6 seconds to gain this buff. So what I've heard is it's off your base power, um, which is a shame. But um, it still does a really nice um, proc on your allies as well. And also increasing, you, um, increasing their power, which can in doubt help everybody in the group as well. Now we're going to look at the boons. So a lot of you may not have done the um, Storm King's Thunder, but I'll give you an idea of what you should be pushing for. So I've gone with Control Resist um, because as a Paladin, once you're on the floor, you are taking a lot of damage and it's a lot harder. And uh, this is Lifesteal Severity. So I've been over this a couple of times in a lot of the videos. Don't go with Severity. If you haven't got Lifesteal, don't bother. Severity is how much um, health you take back, not the chance it, you have to take it back. Then we're going to go with 400 incoming healing and 2% Everfrost resist over the 400 stamina gain. Um, 
the incoming healing is more beneficial to me as a character in the build that we're running. Um, we don't need that much heals. Uh, we, sorry, we need the more heals than the stamina gain um, because once you're in sanctity, you can't do anything. You can't fire off encounter powers. You can't use your at wills. You can't use your dailies. Nothing. You are pretty much vulnerable in your sanctity. If you're going down, you're going down. So it's um, it's a good one to have sanctity, but it's hard. I rather stay out of it. You can stay alive through without it as much as possible. Then we've gone with chance when taking damage you gain 2000 bonus damage on your next attack. Icy Wrath, it is a good one to have. Still procs nicely with them um, some DPS. Um you gain recovery based on how much stamina or guard gain you're missing. As I say, I hardly go into sanctity so much of my stamina is as high as possible, so I'm not going to gain that much recovery. And uh, we go with glacial strength. Your maximum hit points is increased by 3200. Uh, Again, works brilliantly with Aura of Courage and also Vengeful Heat. When you kill a foe, you have a chance to deal up to 2,000 fire damage. We are a support build now. We're not killing that many foes and uh, it isn't going to do... 2,000 isn't that much um, as greater as the 3,000 that we can help out our whole group. Now, this is where it's split. For my build, personally, I've gone with the deflection, which is going to stack up three times. I'm only going to put um, possibly two points into this one. Um, the reason being because um, I'm definitely going to go with... Excuse me, with healing warmth. So we do a lot of heals, and uh, with this, we have a chance to damage up to five enemies near your target uh, for up to 4,000 damage. So it's not the biggest bit of damage, but with our healing spells, and as you'll see later on, a lot of the other heals proc quite often as well. Um, it's going to be a great one. If you are pushing more DPS and you want to stick away from the whole heals um, and you don't like the af aspect of Prism, I recommend it highly. I highly, highly recommend Prism with the changes to Divine Protector. You can go with Chill of Winter, but I don't uh, I don't recommend it, honestly. Uh, it, it gains a stack and uh, bursts it out as damage. But personally, I like the idea of healing warmth and the deflect um, damage as well. Then we're going to have a look at Sharandar. These I'm going to fly over these ones because you can look at my previous videos on this. We're going to go with 400 power. We're going to look at 400 deflect, 3% action point gains, and uh, Elven Tranquility. When being struck by a foe, you have a chance to heal yourself for up to 20,000 hit points. That does help out uh, when your whole group is taking a lot of damage. Um, it doesn't, uh, as far as I know, it doesn't proc if you're at 100% health. Um, so you don't uh, use these until you're really down on your luck and you are taking a lot of damage. Then we're going to go with Fae Thistle. When you deflect an attack, you deal up to 3,000 damage to your attacker. So, of course, now we're doing about 8,000 when we deflect from the... Um, the other one in Storm King's Thunder. And with the Shadow Clad enchantment, it procs brilliantly. It works really nicely. Then we're going to go into the Dread Ring. We've gone for all the top class, which is 250 power and 250 movement. 400 lifesteal over 400 regen. Lifesteal is obviously inside battle. Regen is outside, which kind of sucks. Then you go with 3% deflect chance. Then enraged regrowth when taking damage you have a chance to heal up to 20,000 hit points over a few seconds after this effect ends you have 4,000 more defense so again defense stacks up really nicely in there as well then I've gone with the burning guidance your healing spells have a chance to burn enemies near the target for up to 2,000 radiant damage so again this works perfectly with prism and once you pop into your sanctity if you ever do go into it it procs brilliantly and uh, if you have a DC in there who does occasional heals or you have another paladin who's a healer in, then this works amazingly and you can see that burning light flashing up constantly. It's a really great one to have. Uh, you are doing a lot of damage off of that as well with your prism and your uh, divine protector and burning guidance work brilliantly together. Icewind Dale, we're going to go with uh, encrouching tactics. You gain 400 combat advantage over the AoE resist. And then we go with 400 incoming healing. We go with 400 recovery over the crit severity because we're not often critting that high. So we might as well take the recovery when we can take it because that obviously increases your AP gain. Then you have Cold Shoulder. When damaged by a foe, you have a chance to proc Cold Shoulder on them, which will reduce the damage of their next attack by up to 2,000. So it is a good one to have. It's not the biggest damage reduction, but 2,000 is 2,000 less, and it does help out a bit. Cool Resolve, again, is to do with Stamina Guard Gain. We're not in there that much, so it's not going to help us too much. 
And then Rousing Warmth. Uh, chance when healed to gain up to 3,000 damage bonus on your next attack. So this procs brilliantly and bursts out onto your allies as well and uh, helps out with all sorts of things. It pops your prism perfectly. For some reason, the rousing warmth uh, really does work nicely and uh, you can see this popping quite often as well. The Underdark campaign, we've gone with 400 power and maximum hit points. We've also gone with 400 crit and the maximum hit points. Then we go with combat advantage bonus um, is increased by 10%. That is over the regen. Again, regen is outside of battle. So we might as well take the combat advantage, help our team out with the extra DPS. And then we've gone for control effects. Have a 5% shorter duration when applied to you over the guard gain. Um, again, we're not in sanctity that often. And for the final one in this one, I'm definitely going to go with the damage um, increase against the demons. Um, the tenacity uh, isn't that great because it's only five percent it's better to get that templar's wrath popping and we can get those extra temp hit points that is going to be our friend uh, with the templar's wrath tyranny of the dragon is obviously the oldest one of the campaigns and probably one of the harder ones to do up until now um, we're going to go with 400 power over the pure hit points power is obviously going to be our better friend out of that one um, deflect over crit strike defense over armor pen life steal over regen and then the final one i've gone for 10 percent increased incoming healing it is a huge percentage and uh, obviously people are doing big heals now so you can now have a bigger amount of healing coming in and then um, you might want to go with three percent increase life severity but it's um sorry life still chance but it's not the best um i would go with um probably putting three points into this the the 15 percent incoming healing is the best one to have and then for your guild stronghold a lot of people may not have this one um but pure, purely because of this video and if you do get into a guild you're going to want to go for the power um obviously with the armor pen there is a uh, cap and um, power, there isn't really a cap at the minute. Um, so we're going to go with the power. It gives us extra help with Templars, Wrath, things like that. Defense, we've gone with the defense um, purely because it helps out with things like Fangbreaker and Orcus. But if you are in those lower ended dungeons, you could go with Lifesteal and run as you as one of the Soul Paladins and have like four DPS in there. It does help out uh, Lifesteal, keeping yourself alive as well. Uh, but mainly for the most of the part with the dungeons, the harder ones, you want to go with that defense. It helps out the group a lot with you staying alive and taking a lot of aggro. And then onto the maze engine, we're going to take Abyssal Regeneration, 400 incoming healing, 400 critical, or combat advantage, sorry. Then we're going to go with the action point gain, and then we go with engine inspiration. Your healing spells have a chance to heal allies around you for 20,000 hit points. So a lot of people aren't going with this. Uh, they're probably going with the displaced fate, but this is useless. When you're below 30% health, you gain a shield, increasing damage resistance by 60%. Now there's a cap on damage resistance. I think it's about 95%, uh, which kind of sucks, um, but this is is awful because if you're at 30% health you're probably about to die anyway so it's useless it's practically useless uh you might want this one. Behemoth's might increase his critical chance bonus. Uh, but I've gone with the healing one purely because Prism procs nicely with it. It, um, it shoots out to everyone and heals them up as well. Elemental Evil. We've gone with power, maximum hit points. Regen and hit points over the lifesteal severity. Um, so severity, of course, is how much you steal back. I don't have a high chance, so there's no point. We've gone for 400 recovery and hit points over critical strike. And then Gale of Retribution, when taking damage, you have a, a chance to heal up to 24,000 hit points over a few seconds. After this effect ends, your critical strike is increased by 1,000 for 10 seconds. So again, this is great. Your crit strike is going to work nicely with things like Templar's Wrath and, uh, and also your Divine uh, Judgment and the um, amazing Hammer Slam that you can do as your main DPS daily. Now we're going to look into companions. So this is a big one for me. Uh, this is a very big one. I went for the demigod. Uh, the demigod companion is great. Uh, once you deflect, does almost no damage and does 6,000 damage to the source of the deflected attack uh, once every 30 seconds. So they have put a time cap on it now, um, but it still works really nicely as you can have a chance to do one damage to you and 6,000 damage to your attacker with the other deflects repping as well. 
Um, you can do uh, about 15,000 deflect on one of them, which is amazing. It works brilliantly. Then the newly found companion is the Rust Monster. So you have a 25% chance to inflict a 5% damage debuff on the attacker stacks up to three times. So we have 25% chance to effectively uh, do 15% damage debuff on the attacker. So that reduces the amount of damage they do. And now when it's equipped as well, when you have it actually equipped to your character, it works brilliantly so um, grab your targets for equipment and reduces the damage done by the target by eight percent this is um, one of the companion the active companion bonuses so it's like a power it uses so you have to have it summoned for these to work and uh, hyper corrosion also um, reduces the target's armor by five percent uh, so you do five percent increased damage which is brilliant it's a great one for tanks so you reduce the amount of damage they do to you and increase the amount of damage you do to them it's perfect for your group it works out brilliantly then I have the blacksmith, 25% um, chance to reflect 10% of the damage taken. If the same target hits you four times, you reflect three times the damage taken. So of course, things like Orcus or final bosses, you can reflect a lot of damage back at the uh, the attacker as well. Then I've gone with the Energon or the Energion. It's the um, it's amazing. It is not an augment, which is perfect for us. So the bonding room stones work perfectly for it. It's a controller. And um, so what it does is it increases your maximum hit points by 5%. So it's not the best thing to have, but the power itself on its active, once you're in battle, you generate energies. And then once you leave battle, you gain action point for yourself. So again, AP gain is a vital thing. It's unfortunate it's not inside a battle, but you can have your divine protector to protect everybody just before you can be able to get your procs up and things like that. As well as a defender, which is the... Earth Archon, he's great. Increases the damage against targets by 6% when you are at full health. So with the Divine Protector and with our Templar's Wrath, hands down, most of the time, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, we are at full health. So we're going to be doing a, an increased amount of damage. And uh, it's just a great one to have for our characters. Other ones that I used originally... Uh, were the Yeti, so if you guys have the Yeti, still great companion to have, it's definitely one to have. Um, stacking Archons is another great one to have, um, I had the Air Archon here as you can see, and also the Fireball um, Archon as well, which is a great one to have as well. Then we're going to have a look at, I'm sorry I just jumped out of there, we want to go on to Mounts, so um, definitely for me, Daily power grants 15% of your total action points over 10 seconds. We're still trying to push that perma bubble. It's not going to be the original perma bubble, but it is up as much as possible and uh, still the bubble build. The other one to have is 2000 recovery, which of course is going to help out with increased encounter powers and the cooldowns on them and also the action point gain. But the primary one we want is the action point gain itself. Um, it works really good with um, some other of the parts in this insignia then we look in the stables uh, shepherd's devotion when you use a daily power receive a buff so i received a thousand five hundred defense deflect and movement and increases your power five percent of your power for 10 seconds so it's insane um it's amazing amazing once you get that power up really really high you can really stack some of these big bits of defense and then the Artificer's Influence, when you use an artifact, receive a buff. So, of course, I have Mythic Artifacts, so every minute I'm gaining this buff. It's not brilliant that it's every minute, but it works amazingly. Partly the fact that I'm gaining 1,500 recovery, which in turn activates action point gain. And then we're gaining 1,600 action point gain anyway. So it works perfectly for me. Uh Champion's Struggle is a nice one. It does help out um, if you take a big hit from Orcus. It's not going to save your life, but it is going to help. Um, as well as uh, Protector's Friendship. When your companion attacks, you gain power and defense. So again, this one, Champion's Struggle and Gladiator's Guile. I am looking to change them, but um, when your companion attacks, you gain power and defense. Um, with the Bonding Runestones and the way that they work, it's going to work out brilliantly as well so the main one we want to change is gladiator's guile so move faster when your stamina is low regain stamina regen stamina when it is low so 
it's a vice versa. You don't move as fast when you have low stamina, but you move uh, faster when you have high stamina and you gain that stamina back. So if you have to go into Sanctity as a last resort, um, then you will build it back faster as well. So it works out really nicely. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant uh, set I have. I really like these two. These two work hand in hand perfect together. Um, it is really good. So now we're going to have a look at how it works and how it possesses its powers. So Binding Oath Pops, you can see that we're sort of doing 5,000 with that. And uh, these are about 5,000, maybe 6,000. That's just without using any of my other stuff. Um, and uh, once we use the Radiant Strike and then we proc with the Judge itself and then use Burning Light, we really start to see some of those big numbers. We're getting 8,000 for that as well. It's a big boost. It is quite a big boost. And Templar's Wrath. You can see I'm gaining 199,000 temp hit points from that, just from these guys here. So if I was to do that in a dungeon with allies, for some reason, and a great reason on this build, um, it does proc. Templar's Wrath procs off allies as well. So um, I'm going to be showing you some gameplay of me in, a, in the end. And uh, recently I've done a dungeon and it really helps out if you have players who are close. So if you have a lot of great weapons fighters... Um, it does really well because the Templar's Wrath procs off of those guys as well. So you can really start boosting. So you can see I've got 200,000 off that as well. And uh, Ring of Brutality procs as well, which is great. And uh, we can really start to rep out some of that temp hit points. But as I say, you can get up to 400,000, 500,000 temp hit points off of this character. It's great. It is a really, really nice build. And uh, with the gear that I run as well, with the gear that I run, I can do PvP. And it works brilliantly in there as well. Anyway guys, if you've enjoyed this video, I know it has been a long one, but thank you all so, so much for sticking around with it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay to show it off. As you can see, it was uh, three Hunter Rangers done really well in that group um, as a Guardian Fighter. So you can see I'm doing healing in there as well. Um, one of the Hunter Rangers is, is um, very good at lifesteal, so that's the reason he's doing himself a lot of healing. Um, but predominantly keeping them alive and um, whatever is amazing. Anyway, guys, as I say, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for the channel for more stuff just like this. Remember to hit that bell notification so you know when I'm going live on live streaming, bits like that, and other videos come out. Share with your friends who have Paladin builds. I prefer this build to any other one that I've seen out there. It is one of the best ones. It works so, so nicely at the minute, especially with the mod changes. And as always, guys, I will see you...